<clears throat> I wonder almost daily why I accepted this appointment from the Ministry. Professor, a word, please. Hello, Professor Black. Ah, Professor Weasley. How, how delightful to see you. Sir? Ah, uh, since I have you here, I wonder if I might, um, speak with you about Professor Fig. Oh, very well. I've decided to give him a bit more, uh, leeway with his time. Leeway, Professor? Are you sure that's wise? I confess I do worry for his students. He's rarely here as it is. I realize that, and I'd like to keep it that way. I see. But, sir, if I may, I am wary of how much time the new fifth year seems to be spending away from the castle, supposedly on Professor Fig's behalf. I've heard unsettling rumors of their escapades. Everything from sneaking into the Forbidden Forest to confronting Ranrock's loyalists and Rookwood's lot. <coughs> what? <coughs> Goodness! You cannot believe everything you hear, Professor. No, 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 you cannot. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I shall keep an eye on Fig. You simply keep doing the wonderful job that you're doing. <laughs> simply wonderful. I... well, I... Um, thank you. But I'm happy to look into... Uh, good, good. That'll be all, Weasley. I, I mean, Professor Weasley. Good day. A wonderful job. Leeway for Professor Fig. Soldiers. Oh! That ought to give Professor Fig some breathing room. It's Christmas! Christmas time, children! Everyone gets detention for Christmas! since you saved Mr. Rabe and I from the Ashwinders. We have come so far. We should discuss the next steps in our plan to stop Harlow. Thank you, Natty, for stepping on my intro yet again. Alright, hey guys and gals, welcome back to the adventures of uh, Baldur Kickenbottom and Hogwarts. And this episode we're going to start, I think, with a third trial. So let's go talk to Professor Nima. Welcome back. I guess we're doing this without Professor Fig. Hello, Professor. I have news. The goblins are looking for something. Another repository. They've built drills to help with their search. Oh, most troubling. Are these repositories like the broken container I found at Rookwood Castle? They are. I fear we have no time to lose. Have a look at the map. Fortunately, the next trial is fairly nearby. It's Hogwarts. As you know, I was headmistress in my time. My portrait hangs in the headmaster's office. In fact, I witnessed Professor Black learn of your arrival. And I'll confess that I wondered about you. Wait, is the next trial in the headmaster's office? It is. I had hoped that when the time came, the occupant of that office would be of help to us. Unfortunately, this headmaster seems wildly unconcerned with anything but himself. You'll need to access the office while he's away. I understand. Very well. I'll find some way to get in. Good. I shall meet you in my portrait there. Until then. Uh, how are we supposed to do that? Hmm. I think it's time to meet somebody who knows how to make polyjuice. 
How will I gain access to the headmaster's office? Perhaps Professor Fig will know what to do. Yeah, let's see what Professor Fig has to say. Mine now, Demi guys. While I was here. Professor Fig, the keepers have shown me where the next trial is. Has something changed? Lodgok and I have learned that the goblins are searching for another repository, like the one we saw at Rookwood Castle, and I discovered that they're building massive drills to help in their search. Professor Fitzgerald seemed very concerned. I see. Ranrock clearly knows even more than we suspected. And sir, there's something else. Lord Gok knew Miriam. He knew Miriam? They encountered each other at Rookwood Castle. She was doing research. That's where she found the container with the port key. He liked her so much that he let her leave with it, despite orders from Ranrock. I don't know what to say. She could win over almost anyone. I want to hear more of this. And, in fact, I'd like to speak with Lodgok directly. But we've no time now. Where is the next trial? Believe it or not, it's in the headmaster's office. Incredible. Very well. You'll need the password to get past the stone gargoyle. The headmaster's house elf will know it. I don't know the headmaster's house elf. Will he even speak to me? I imagine he's loyal to the headmaster. He is. So you'll need a disguise. I have just the thing. A polyjuice potion. You'll look and sound like Professor Black. Wait, doesn't polyjuice potion require a bit of the person you want to change into? And take ages to brew? It does. So how do you already have polyjuice potion to change into Professor Black? One never knows when such a thing may come in handy. You sneaky bastard. Let's just say I felt the need to be prepared for anything after my fruitless trip to the Ministry on his behalf. Now, time is of the essence. Drink up and I shall explain more. <laughs> How do you feel? Incredible. I won't forget that taste anytime soon. <clears throat> How do I sound? Convincing. I've taken the liberty of transfiguring your robes. As we discussed, you'll need the password from Scrope, who could be anywhere in the castle. You might look for Professor Kagawa. She's taken to badgering the poor elf about Quidditch in the hopes that he can convince Black to change his mind. Thus far, unsuccessfully. I see. But what if Professor Black sees me? Leave him to me. I shall tell him where to meet a liaison from the Ministry in Hogsmeade. That should give you plenty of time. Thank you, Professor. I suppose we'll meet again in the map chamber. It's rather strange to hear gratitude coming from Professor Black. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> now to find the Headmaster's house elf. Oh yeah, nothing can go wrong with this. Can't do any magic. Do you have a moment, Professor? Professor, I was hoping to catch you. I... Oh, I, um, places to be, Professor Sharp. Places to be. Of course, sir. Only, <clears throat> you'd asked me about a particular potion, and I... Well, I... I did? I did, yes. Well, spit it out, Sharp. I don't have all day. Probably... Best not to discuss it here, sir. I assure you, Sharp, you may speak freely. Very well. I've brewed the cure for the <laughs> and I can drop it by your office when it's convenient. <clears throat> of course, yes. No need for all the cloak and dagger. Simply have a student deliver it. A student. Very well, sir, if you insist. I do. And thank you, Sharp. I just hope you've brewed enough for all my boils. 
Oh. Now, to determine which student gets this rather unenviable task. Ooh, 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 ooh. Everett. Everett. Everett should deliver it. Have you seen my ivory handled hand mirror? Of course you haven't. Everett Chewing Clopton. With your mouth open? Where are your manners? Everett Clapton, that's who should deliver it. I thought I heard the headmaster approaching. Gareth! Uh, uh, Mr. Weasley! What are you doing here? Don't you have uh, somewhere to be? Oh, Professor, yes, of course. All sorts of places I'd rather be right now. Uh, do you need something from me? I'm looking for my house elf. Surely you've seen him? Ah, the little one-eared fellow. I saw him heading to the Great Hall moments ago, muttering on about your, um, sterling graces, sir. I am watching you, Mr. Weasley. Mr. Redding, who owns Honeydukes, tells me some of his billywig stings recently went missing. Prime potion ingredient. And I know you fancy yourself a skilled potioneer. What? But, uh, sir, I haven't been anywhere near Honeydukes. I... Bah! That's enough from you. Just know that I have eyes and ears everywhere. On your way, Mr. Weasley. Oh, I will not abuse this power. Well, there's one for my diary. <gasps> well, everything's looking rather festive. When I witness what passes for magic in these halls, I, uh, I simply mourn for the future of the wizarding world. Detention? Here, yeah. what could he want? Mr. Gaunt, where do you think you're going? I beg your pardon, sir. I'm simply on my way outside. Taking the day off, eh? Typical student, wasting the hours away. I... I have to write 20 inches on Dittany, and its uses was heading to the greenhouse. Ah, yes. Mixed with uh, bubo tuba pus makes a, a fine uh, mustache paste. Yes, mustache paste. Uh, I find. <clears throat> Are you feeling all right, sir? You don't seem yourself. I assure you I am quite healthy, Gaunt. If I need a medical diagnosis, I shall head to St. Mungo's. Oh, oh, this is too much fun. Stan Something is very wrong with Professor Bob. Professor, a word? Professor Black, again, it is not too late to reconsider your decision regarding Quidditch. We... we could still have trials and a somewhat shortened season. It would be better than none at all. But the injury, Madam Kagawa. Professor... More than one student has taken a bludger to the head on our pitch. I dare say it knocked some sense into them. And they are fine now. The fact that it happened to be a pure blood, well, that's no reason to... What nonsense! That you would trivialize the health of a student over a, a silly game. A silly game? I... You are quite impossible sometimes. Sir, I have a good mind to write to the Department of Magical Games and Sports at the Ministry about you. Good idea. I can even provide the parchment should you need it. Now, where is my elf? I... parchment? Very well, I will, and with pleasure. And I spotted Scrope in the Great Hall. Seems to be avoiding me. Hmm, I wonder why. Good day, Madam Kagawa. Detention? Detention? What did we do to deserve him as a headmaster? I managed to conjure a hedgehog one. Greetings! I mean... Out of my way, children! <laughs> Hogwarts hasn't been the same since Black took over. Lucky for us, we have Professor Weasley. De what the fuck? You there! Detention! The headmaster! Well, I hope it's not about anything I've been doing. Miss Broom, a word. Oh, Professor, this is an uh, interesting surprise. It's Bloom, by the way. Remind me of your area of affinity, Broom. OWLs are swift approaching. Charms, sir. Nonverbal spells. Might work on one that makes me disappear. Well, keep at it, Broom. And before you know it, you'll be as invisible as that new fifth year seems to be. They're not invisible. 
I mean, I've seen them about. I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> Speaking of invisible, where's my blasted house elf? Something seems a little off with the headmaster. <clears throat> I wonder almost daily why I accepted this appointment from the Ministry. Professor, mm -hmm. a word, please. Mm -hmm. Hello, Professor Black. Ah, Professor Weasley. How, how delightful to see you. Sir? Ah, uh, since I have you here, I wonder if I might, um, speak with you about Professor Fig. Oh, very well. I've decided to give him a bit more, uh, leeway with his time. Leeway, Professor? Are you sure that's wise? I confess I do worry for his students. He's rarely here as it is. I realize that, and I'd like to keep it that way. I see. But, sir, if I may, I am wary of how much time the new fifth year seems to be spending away from the castle, supposedly on Professor Fig's behalf. I've heard unsettling rumors of their escapades, everything from sneaking into the Forbidden Forest to confronting Ranrock's loyalists and Rookwood's lot. <coughs> what? <coughs> Goodness, you cannot believe everything you hear, Professor. No, 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 you cannot. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I shall keep an eye on Fig. You simply keep doing the wonderful job that you're doing. <laughs> simply wonderful. I... well, I... Um, thank you. But I'm happy to look into... Uh, good, good. That'll be all, Weasley. I, I mean, Professor Weasley. Good day. A wonderful job. Leeway for Professor Fig. Soldiers. I shall never understand that. Oh! That ought to give Professor Fig some breathing room. It's Christmas! Christmas time, children! Everyone gets detention for Christmas! Why do you know Martha sees what a wonderful job Scope is doing? Scroop! Oh, greetings, Master. Remind me of the password to my office. Oh, but Master made Scroop swear never to tell anyone, even Master himself. How dare you question me? I've a mind to give you a matching set of ears. Uh, uh yes, sir. Uh, of course, sir. Uh, Scroop begs forgiveness. It is the Black Family motto, Master. Hmm. Right. Oh, I know this. Of course. I, uh... Master does remember it. It's pure bloods forever, isn't it? Uh, uh, close, Master. Uh, Scrope thinks Master is indeed testing Scrope. Uh, it is always pure. <laughs> Obviously. And, of course, as Master knows, in French. Ah! Yes, of course. Uh, I order you to pronounce it for me. Oh, but Master knows that Scrope's French is most pitiful. Oh, uh, very well. Uh, toujours pur. Ha! Thank you. Never speak of this conversation with me or anyone else. Of course, sir. Scrope shall try his best to keep out of Master's way. <laughs> The polyjuice potion's wearing off. I best get out of sight. Ahem. Attention, students. I. <laughs> oh. Gryffindor wins the house cup. Made it just in time. It's wearing off. Fig was right. I can't believe it worked. Now to speak the password to the gargoyle.
Oh wow, it's Gryffindor everywhere! What a surprise! Alright, now let's break into his office. I'm pretty sure if the headmaster ever found out, we would be expelled. Possibly go to Azkaban, I don't know. How high up is this? This unusual suit of armor was crafted for a troll. That it has survived at all is astonishing since trolls do not ordinarily wear armor and would understandably be sm prone to smashing it in confusion. <laughs> Why can't I pick that up? <laughs> oh. Well, I was going the right way. I've never had difficulties with balcony holes. House elf armor. For a second, I thought that was locked. Why are there Chinese lanterns here? The gargoyle. That's where I need to speak the password. Revelio. The staircase that leads to the headmaster's office is guarded by an enchanted gargoyle that will on let only those who know the password enter. Though anyone choosing to visit the current occupant of the office is difficult to fathom. Toujours pure. I wonder if all the elite wizarding families have a motto. Oh, wow. Revelio. Level three locks. It's good to see you. All thanks to Professor Fig's quick thinking. Now what? Approach the pedestal in the antechamber and read the book that appears. What can I expect to find in the book? A story. I cannot say more. You may recognize some elements of it, as I was inspired by a tale with which many wizarding children are familiar. I suspect there will be more to this than reading a book. Your suspicions are correct. 
We shall speak when you are finished. Has this been under the headmaster's nose all this time? Yeah, this is rather a large nose. Why are they going here? That must be the pedestal. Professor Fitzgerald, can you hear me? I am here. In this place, you may call me Eve. You shall be witness to a fable. Pay attention. Things are not always as they seem. Cool. You must move swiftly and cautiously. Use the tools you encounter to find me. The first you will need is a cloak. Is this the Deathly Hollows? In this place, as in life, death takes many forms. Avoid each of them at all costs. It is the Deathly Hollows. any spells. This is a pretty cool art style. I should have run when I could. I'd be free by now. They're gone for now. I need to get out of here. Where could Neve be? Oh, I can't even do a basic cast. I need to time this just right. straight ahead. They won't be able to find me if I go up there. I can't move. This is my chance. I'm coming, Neve. Damn, there's a lot of them. Too many. I must cross this road as fast as I can. That's where I need to go, but I need to find a way past them. Right, go away. Mm. 
Nothing this way, but more danger. There must be another way to find you. I need to turn back. There's no getting past them that way. Close tight. That doorway looks like the only safe way forward. my chance this has the slightest twinge about being unfair that's the way forward I'm invisible. Well, we've been invisible the whole time. They can't see me at all. I can get closer to them. This is the way forward. Finally free. Now where are you, Neve? You have had one death thus far, but have yet to find me. Keep searching, but this time you will be unable to hide. Wield the wand you see before you. Do not squander its extraordinary power. some spells. Depulsive. Bombarda. Defender. 
Defender. Descender. Depulsive. Unlimited power with the Elder Wand. Do we get to keep it? Things where we have to die because we Stupid. can't really defeat death. Bombarda. Pictures on the wall. <laughs> Centaur and a kelp. Stone. This must be for me. I open at the close. Hmm. 
You are far from finished. Pass through the mourners ahead. Nothing is what it seems. I can't believe she's dead. Dear sweet Neve. <laughs> Neve. We won't be the same without her. You found me, but you cannot undo what has been done. The magic of the stone can only conjure a shadow of my former self. But there is no light without shadow as there is no shadow without light. Simply because you can eliminate darkness does not always mean that you should. Remember that as you witness my memory. That was a cool trial. Dora, what you did for your father was remarkable, wasn't it? And Percival needn't worry about the strands of emotion or the traces that this magic leaves. I found a way to contain all of it. You haven't stopped. Goblin Silver. You spoke to a goblin about this. Don't worry, he has no idea what we're containing. We don't know what effect any of this may have. The emotions, the dark traits... You sound like Percival! And as it happens, I do know. It is a source of strength, of focus. Somehow it enhances my ability to wield magic. I don't follow, Isadora. I think we can harness it. Power like this is not to be toyed with in the wrong hands. You saw again. what I did for my father. Onia, oh, imagine the good we could do. Everyone is in some kind of pain. In. Oh, can you feel it? Oh, it's Adora. This must stop. All of us. You've kept this power to yourselves for so long because you fear it. I choose to embrace it. What did she take? Oh, I must have just automatically apparated us back to the map chamber. Well, that looked important. Is it true? Has someone completed the first three trials? It is, and I have. But you are so... Young? I know. You must be Professor Bacar. I am. Pleased to meet you. The pensive memory I just witnessed was Isadora inhaling painful emotions. She was. I found it disturbing. But how did she gain power from it? How did she harness it? It was disturbing. 
Although, I wonder that you are asking about her power. I hesitate to reveal the location of my pensive to someone who, perhaps, has yet to understand the responsibility of power. I can assure you, Professor, I do. In fact, what you don't yet know is that a dangerous goblin called Ranrock has accessed the repository at Rookwood Castle. He has learned to harness the contents of it as a source of immense power. He plans to use that power against wizardkind. We have no time to waste. I see. Nonetheless, the knowledge you shall gain after you witness my memories is too valuable to share without further consideration. I shall require time to confer with the other keepers. It seems we have no choice but to wait, frustrating as it is. I heard what you told Professor Bakar. Isadora was inhaling emotions to gain power? She was. And she pulled emotions, as she did from her father, from Professor Fitzgerald, without permission. Monstrous. What's more, she said that she found a way to store the traces of magic she extracted in goblin silver. The repositories? Possibly. There's something I didn't get a chance to tell you earlier. Ranrock has been digging at locations tied to the five names he found in the journals of a goblin metal worker named Bragball. Five names? The Keepers, and who else? Isadora Morganak? Precisely. That's how he's been one step ahead of us. Gringotts, the Tower, Rookwood Castle. If the Keepers won't tell you where the next trial is yet, I say we at least maintain a watch on Ranrock. Perhaps he'll lead us to more information. Perhaps. I hope to hear from Lodgok soon. I haven't heard anything since I learned of the drills. Oh, and as you've probably guessed by now, your Polyjuice plan worked like a charm. I knew it would. I may have done too good a job distracting Black. I had no idea he can't hold his fire whiskey. <laughs> Did you get him pissed drunk? Prepare for your owls. Oh no, we gotta take a test? I shouldn't have reacted so bitterly about your goblin friend. I apologize. I hope we can finish what we started with the triptych. Please meet me at the southern coast. We can search for the final canvas piece. What quest is this? <laughs> Professor Bins? In today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, uh, we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Throughout the many goblin battles, countless <laughs> wizard cloaks were lost. He just had to stay Actually, awake. We do know the number. 632. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmos the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the bell tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts.
Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well then, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly. <laughs> Some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I know that name. Lord Gok said he was an ancestor of Ranrock. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Now, where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbald Weft, another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Curious student. Revelio. Display here in the bell tower entrance hall. All students introduce themselves to this period. I hear it. Sir Skagglethorpe the Heedless once challenged a mountain troll to a game of musical... <laughs> this set of armor belonged to Sir Scragglethorpe the Heedless, who unwisely challenged a mountain troll to a game of musical chairs. <laughs> Care to guess who won? If you fail history of magic, you're doomed to repeat it. The class. These bits of broom are all that's left of a witch called Celine Wartnobby. Rumor has it she was demonstrating her experimental lunar apparition charm. She was never seen again. Perhaps she succeeded. I suppose we'll never know. Have you heard of the wet willy charm? Leave it to Bins to make the most interesting school in the world seem dull. Revelio. This is the skull of famed tailor Grimbald Welft, whose skilled needlework repaired countless witches' and wizards' coats during the Goblin Rebellion of 1752, thus preventing them from taking ill during the battle. Oh yes, I see you found Grimbald Welft. Yes, I rather enjoyed seeking him out. The thrill of the scholarly pursuit. I know the feeling quite well. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir Athbuddle. He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. Standing in eternal but symbolic watch over the bell tower is a retinue of loyal knights. Soldier? Or rather, statues. Revelios. Keen-eyed students will spot the statue Sir Afra, of Sir Afra, This is a centuries-old likeness of nestled among the ranks. Fearless mouse hunter and devoted study companion. Hey, Bobby. People have always loved their pets. I find that comforting. This wooden statue bears the likeness of Pangurdon, fearless, fear, fearless feline mouse hunter and devoted study companion. At least we're out of the classroom. For now. Where his warm and approachable demeanor. Revelio. The set of armor belonged to Sir F. Puddle of the Cheerful Continents, a legendarily friendly knight who supposedly won every battle before it was fought by virtue of his amiable negotiating tactics. Confringo. Hogwarts is impervious. Professor Bins, I found the statue of Sir Afpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Afpuddle's affability was his undoing. 
died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Huh. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide mourning the loss of a wizard. Goblins and wizard kind will never trust each other. Yes, well, it takes a cauldron to raise a chispurfle, as they say. A mm. what? History does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, a thought both comforting and disconcerting. The wise student, such as yourself, will learn from it. History is written by those who do their schoolwork, so they say. Or at least, I like to say that. I had no idea that you could have history class. How can we do so much I still can't believe we escaped the Ashwinders. You may not realize it, but you are the talk of the school since you saved me that day. I wonder how everyone knows about it. I told my mother in the hope that she would be more forgiving of what I have been up to if it came from me. She likely told other professors, and <laughs> news travels quickly. Unfortunately, she might, in fact, have been even less forgiving than I'd hoped. If she knew more about what you've done, I suspect she'd be proud. If she knew any more about what I've done, she would never let me out of her sight again. I'm sorry. Has Officer Singer done anything with the evidence we provided? She has not. Halo is as strong as ever. Someone needs to stop him, whether it is us or Officer Singer. If someone had stopped the monsters like him in Matabililand, my father would be alive today. What exactly happened to your father? It was a beautiful day. My mother had gone to tend to a neighbor who was ill, and so my father and I were galloping in the savannah. Galloping? Your father was also an animagus, I take it. He could become the most majestic giraffe and he would carry me on his back, my arms around his neck. We were on our way home, when we surprised a group of bandits who had come from our village. One of them saw me just as he removed a scarf from his face. He shouted and then aimed his rifle. He didn't want you to identify him. Exactly. In an instant, my father bowed his neck to protect me and was hit. As he fell, my father changed back into his human form. When the bandits saw this, they turned and ran in fear. Magic terrified them, and then he was gone. <sighs> and it was all my fault. Your fault? How so? He died protecting me. If I had been capable of protecting myself, he would still be alive today. My mother and I tried to go on without him, but it became too much for us there. A few years later, we left to come to Scotland. I'm sorry, Natty. I can't imagine what you've been through. Your father sounds exceptional. He was. Truly extraordinary. And thank you for your kind words. We all have our burdens. My father had a saying about that. Yes, I remember. Rain does not fall on one roof alone. Exactly. Soon you and I will put an end to the Ashwinders, beginning with Harlow. And once he is gone, we will turn our attention to Rookwood. We are making progress, and we will succeed. Thank you again for saving me. You deserve all of the praise you have received. Oh, wow, that's depressing. Soldier. And on that note, guys and gals, I think we're in the episode here. Uh, kind of surprised I didn't think we, we'd have uh, the History of Magic class. Though I thought that was kind of funny that you, the main part of the class is just, is just try to stay awake. <laughs> uh, next episode we'll do some of the, the side quests with the friends and you know, just keep on going. Uh, with that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see everyone next time. Peace out. Couldn't bring 
light the candles. Thank you.